Hey guys, Stefan Fischer here from All of Road. I hope you guys are well. Today's video is a little bit of a lockdown video. I think it's day 70 something. Two things I have been testing around the house for the past three months are two big uh, power banks. One is uh, the Max Oak K2, which is this one here. And the other one is the Gold Zero Sherpa 100 PD, which is this one here. The Max Oak is a huge 50,000 milliamp hour uh, power bank and the Sherpa is a 25,000 uh, milliamp hour power bank. For full disclosure, both of these power banks have been provided to me free of charge for review purposes. However, uh, this is not a paid review. I tell you exactly what I think about both of the power banks as always. If you follow my channel, you may be wondering why I need power banks if I have two 100 amp hour lithiums in the car. But uh, to be honest, I always carry power banks, usually a bit smaller ones, uh, for quite a few reasons. Number one, for example, when on the trip with the kids, it is quite handy for the kids to charge their torches, devices and so on in the back of the car. Given that I also always charge so much stuff from cameras, from drones, from phones, iPads, um, it is quite handy for me to actually have a mobile battery bank which I can just uh, have around the fire or on the table or in the rear of the car, wherever it just suits. Sometimes I happen to have mobile phone reception on my two week solo trip, for example. I did listen quite a bit to podcasts and uh, the mobile phones nowadays, I mean, they, they do not last long. Um, my one is now two years old. The battery is down to 80%, uh, my iPhone 10X. And yeah, it, it comes in quite handy to have a mobile power bank um, with you. Not to mention, it's also a backup device. If uh, for whatever reason, really, my uh, batteries in the car, whatever should fail, it's good to have a power bank around um, just to make sure that my phones and so on can be topped up uh, at least for a while. Another reason for me is if I work um, remotely, I have my table somewhere outside that's not always super close to the car that I could, for example, charge my laptop uh, while I'm working. That was really one of the main reasons for me to look into these two bigger banks because I need something which can power my laptop easily. So let's start with the Max Oak K2. I won't give you a full technical analysis and test of the battery bank simply yeah, because I really don't have the test gear for that. However, I give you my take on it and using it around the house now for three months and testing it with quite a few devices. The unit itself seems to be pretty good quality. It has a good feel to it. It's nicely built. It uh, feels like it has an aluminium housing, um, the front is plastic, it is a heavy unit which you would expect with 50,000 milliamp hour. So let's start with the features of the Max Oak K2. The unit has four USB-A outlets, two provide 2.1 amp and two provide 1 amp. It has a 12 volt 2.5 amp output for example digital cameras, as well as a 20 volt 5 amp output for laptops. Next to it, you have the power on button and next to that are four LED lights which indicate the charge status. And the last plug on the panel is the input plug for the 220 volt charger. The dimensions are 21 cm by 14 cm by 3.5 cm and the weight is a whopping 1.2 kg. However, that weight is to be expected with the 50,000 milliamp hour battery. As a comparison, my iPhone XS has a 2600 milliamp hour battery. So with a 50,000 milliamp hour battery, obviously I could charge that iPhone many, many times. The K2 comes with a laptop charging cable, as well as 14 different connectors for all sorts of older laptops. The only way to charge a unit is via the 220 volt power brick, which charges with 42 watts and takes a bit over 6 hours to recharge the unit completely. 
A nice little detail is that it includes a neoprene carrying pouch. Unfortunately, you can't really use the ports while the item is in the pouch due to the zipper position. The unit has no problem charging up to four USB devices at the same time, for instance, iPads, iPhones and the likes. Interestingly, when measuring the output amperage, I got 1.6 amp out of the 1 amp port and 1.8 amp out of the 2.4 amp port. Not sure why, I was obviously expecting 1 amp out of the 1 amp and 2.4 out of the 2.4 amp. The iPad battery was only 30% charged, so that should not have slowed down the charge rate. I had three laptops available to test, one Lenovo ThinkPad E490, one HP ZBook and one MacBook Air with the M1 chip. And unfortunately the charger would not charge a single of them because all three require USB-C charging and the plug is just not available for the K2. However, I did research and I know that the K2 will charge any laptop with an available plug. So if you're considering purchasing the unit for an older laptop, make sure it's on the compatibility list and you should have no problems. For me that turned out to be a bit of a bummer because I was really hoping I could charge my M1 MacBook with the battery bank. But keep in mind the unit was released four years ago and there was very little USB-C charging around at that time. I tried to charge all three laptops via USB-A to USB-3 cable and none of the three laptops will recognize the charger and show it charging. However, the K2 will trickle charge the laptops if you leave them connected, but it will take a very long time to get some meaningful charge back into the laptop. The K2 has no rubber feet on the unit. As a result, it sits less secure on sloped surfaces and it's more prone to scratching. So after I explain the features, let me now go through what I see as the pros and the advantages of this unit. Here are the pros as I see them. Huge 50,000 milliamp hour capacity. It's a good quality, well-built unit. They included 14 different connectors for older laptops are great and so is the neoprene pouch. $200 is a pretty good price for 50,000 milliamp hours. It uh, supports a simultaneous charge and discharge and the separate 20 and 12 volt outputs are good if you are electronically inclined and want to create your own cables, uh, for example, for a 12 volt cigarette lighter. The cons for me are the charging limitations. There is no 12 volt charging, no solar charging. You need 220 volt or an inverter in the car. While I do have an inverter in the car, I don't want to carry another power brick with me just to charge a battery bank. The unit did not work with any of my three modern laptops because all of them use USB-C charging. The power delivery options are a bit limited now. It has no USB-C, no QC3 quick charging or also no wireless charging. One other thing to keep in mind, it's not TSA approved, so you could never take this unit on an airplane, not in the checked-in luggage, but also not into the cabin. So as a final conclusion, who do I think the Max OK2 is suitable for? To be honest, if you want a good solid unit, which gives you a huge amount of battery power, and you have an older style laptop, which is supported by one of the included plugs, or you just have phones and uh, tablets, then this is definitely a great unit. You just need to keep in mind, you can't really charge it without 220 volt, unless you have an inverter in the car and you're willing to run it between six and seven hours to fully recharge the unit. So if you're only away for a weekend and you would like uh, to have enough power to charge your iPads or your mobile phones a few times, these definitely would be sufficient and I reckon it's also a good unit to have around the home in case of a power outage and that's where I mainly use the unit for myself. It would be interesting to see the latest model of this unit and whether it has USB-C charging, whether it uh, supports USB-C laptops and maybe some QC3 quick charging. So overall, this is a good quality unit, but it shows its age and I think there are better solutions out now. So let's now have a look at the Gold Zero Sherpa 100PD. It only has 25,000 milliamp hours, so roughly half the size than the Max Oak. However, it is a much uh, newer unit and it has way more features which suit my usage. So 
Let's quickly have a look at all the features of the Gold Zero Sherpa 100 PD. The unit has a 60 watt USB-C port, which is for power delivery, but also for charging of the unit. It has two 2.4 amp USB-A ports with a max total of 3.4 amp. The power button is for the USB ports. Then we have a LED display, which is percentage based. I like that. And then we have a button which switches the wireless charging on and off. The Sherpa has a 25,600 mAh battery. It weighs around 0.6 kg, is 19.5 cm long, 9.4 wide and 2.5 high. On top of the unit is a 5W wireless QI charging pad. Obviously your device will need to support wireless charging. The unit has 4 rubber feet which makes it very stable and non-slippery. The housing is aluminium with a front and rear plastic panel. I now try charging the same three laptops from the Sherpa and as expected with USB-C charging functionality I had no issues charging any of the three laptops including my 2021 MacBook Air with the M1 chip. The USB-A port charging the same iPad delivered similar amperage as the K2 did. When I charged the same iPad via the USB-C port, it charged over 20% faster. The four rubber feet definitely provide more stability and also prevent the unit from getting scratched. After we went through all the features, let's now have a look what I see as the pros and the good sides of the Sherpa. It is a big 25,600 milliamp battery bank. It is solid built with aluminium housing. It has USB-C fast charging with 60 watt and two USB-A ports which charge up to 2.4 amp. The unit is easily recharged via USB-C or there is an optional solar panel for the unit. You can simultaneously charge and discharge the unit. It has an Australian distributor with Australian support. It is airplane safe and is approved for carry-on luggage. And I like the LED display which shows you the percentage. So are there any negatives to the Sherpa 100 PD? To be honest, I, I couldn't find any really. Sure, uh, would I love to have maybe four ports instead of two ports or two USB-C ports? Yeah, would be a nice addition to have. But in general, I really like that unit. I definitely keep that unit and it certainly will traveling with me in the car on quite a few trips in the future, that is for sure. Yeah, so as a conclusion, the Gold Zero Sherpa, I think, becomes my constant companion for traveling because it powers my laptop. I can charge it on the run without any issues. I don't have to carry a charging brick with me. It uh, provides enough power for my M1 MacBook uh, and uh, for the hard drives. It has the quick charging. So yeah, th that is a modern unit that fits right into my workflow now. Uh, the Max Oak uh, K2, I think it's a great unit with 50,000 milliamp hours. It is absolutely huge. And if you just need the absolute maximum amount of power, then um, that would be the unit to go for. Unfortunately for me, it doesn't work with any of the three laptops I have at home. And while I have an inverter in the car, I don't really want to carry another power brick with me. So it doesn't go on travel with me. However, I still keep it at home. And as you can see, it has gotten a fair bit of use. So for at home, um, it's a good unit. The kids charge their stuff with it. Uh, we had a power outage a few weeks ago, so it worked well for that. It's a good solid unit, just technology wise, it is just behind now. So I would be interested to see how a new modern unit uh, of these um, Max Oak unit would do. Um, yeah, it's good for home use for around the house, but not really suitable for travel, but that is only for me. Thanks a lot for watching guys. I hope you got some useful information out of this video. If yes, please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and maybe even consider becoming one of my Patreon supporters. And with the equivalent of a cup of coffee or two, you can help me um, making these videos.
Being a Patreon supporter also has a few perks. From time to time I give some of the gear away to my Patreon supporters. You have early access to my videos and you can ask me direct questions via the Patreon platform. So guys, have a good day and I hope to see you along the tracks. So long. Mm -hmm.